All right, so uh, welcome to another lecture of uh, 450. So today our plan is uh, um, is back propagation, um, and in short, just back prop. People like to use uh, this word, um, back prop on uh, like uh, multi layer. By multi, I mean much, much uh, more than just three, so multi-layer neural network. Um, if, if we have time, um, we'll be talking about uh, the computational complexity. So computational complexity um, of the, like uh, the back word, back propagation, okay. So now let's begin. And uh, so let's recall neural network, but this time we'll have a, we, we, we will have a much, uh, much more general one. So this time we have a neural network that has, uh, um, so we have a neural network that has uh, a totally, um, my uh, notes here. So we have a neural network that has totally, um, and little l that many layers. So for example, all right, so we totally, we have uh, n little l layer. So for example, this is a first layer. This is a second layer, third layer, and we have many, many more layers, very deep neural network. Um, and this is our n little l layer. Um, so this is our output layer. Oh, sorry, pardon my English. Um, this is the input layer, and uh, this is our output layer. And uh, we use uh, um, so then we have uh, the size of each layer. So for example, if uh, um, our input layer, we use this uh, size uh, S sub one to denote the size and S sub two to denote the size S sub three. So basically our input vector goes here, got transformed to a vector that has the shape of this layer two. For example, if we have an S one by one vector, it got transformed to a S two by one vector, okay. So through some transformation and the nonlinear activation function. Um, and then uh, it's being uh, transformed to um, S3 by one vector. Okay, so after the um, second layer, and we have much, much more layers. Lastly, uh, we have the Lth layer. So um, like uh, we have a single neuron here, so let me, use a circle. So we have a single neuron here. So maybe this is our like um, N sub L minus one layer. Um, sorry, it should be uh, minus one is uh, here. Okay, so. And this is a uh, S sub uh, L minus uh, one, but this is a, uh, this is a, uh, should be this. So I should use this notation, my bad. This should be L, N L and this should be N L minus one. Okay, so we have a little bit more subscript, but uh, hopefully it's okay. So this is our general neural network. And let me put the remark here. So this is a deep, neural network and we have totally, uh, so this is a number of layers, all right? And S, so for example, S, maybe say uh, this is uh, S sub uh, uh, K. This is the size of the output of 
the cave layer. All right. And from, so from arbitrary layer, so right here, we're talking about a uh, very, very in general uh, of uh, what happens here. So let's uh, review what happens from the alt layer to the L plus one layer, what happens? So let me draw a very general graph here. All right. So this is the uh, um, the out layer. And for example, this is our output of the out layer and it will be transformed to another vector, okay, that represents the output of L plus one, L plus first layer. All right. So on the hood, we can uh, express it using this uh, mathematics, uh, using this uh, mathematical notation. So from the Lth layer to L plus one layer, um, our vector got transformed to another vector by going through the following, which is, it, first, it's got multiplied with um, a weight matrix and then plus a bias vector. All right. And sometimes for simplicity, we can ignore this. Uh, if our data is nice, for example, a zero average, zero mean. And then, um, it's getting fed into a nonlinear activation function, okay? So the first step is uh, a linear transform to be precise is, a, is an affine linear transform. So um, And here is a nonlinear activation. And recall our activation, a common choice is a ReLU function. That is, when the input is less than or equal to zero, it's zero. And when uh, it is, uh, greater than zero, it's uh, just uh, the, the X itself. So this is F of X. So for example, F of X, we can uh, use a very simple way to express it. That's uh, the maximum of zero and X. So this is uh, what's on the hood of, uh, um, of our, like uh, uh, the alpha layer. And the question, the question we have here is uh, how to take the derivative of our final input with respect to um, this weight and the bias. So let's recall um, in general, so loss function. So the loss function is L equals one half. So let me add an one half here just to make uh, the expression simple so we, we don't have to add um, this uh, uh, factor two here, okay? And again, let's review what is our y hat. Y hat is our model's output. So by model, I mean our neural network. So the model's output. And y is uh, the true target the true label and what we call is the ground truth. So we hope our model can approximate this number. So we want the difference to be as small as possible. And we apply the gradient descent uh, in this function, on this function. And that's, uh, so we will, maybe we'll do it on Wednesday, but in order 
to perform gradient descent, we have to take gradient. And our goal is to, so in this very, very general neural network, our goal is to figure out what is the derivative of L with respect to arbitrary like alpha layer, all right? So last Wednesday's lecture, I was kind of in a hurry. So um, I didn't elaborate this very well. And today uh, we're gonna do it uh, again. So, uh, I mean, it takes practice, so we'll do it again. Hopefully uh, we can clear uh, the confusion a little bit more, but... Uh... And first of all, um, we'll use chain rule, like, I don't know, uh, a million times. Um, so I'm not sure whether um, like vector calculus um, you guys have done, for example, taking partial derivative, uh, maybe we haven't done this maybe in two years. Um, I'm not sure uh, whether you guys have like uh, learned in either like freshman year or sophomore year of the Cal 3, but uh, maybe we haven't been doing this for years and it's a very good time to review it because if you're not familiar with this type of chain rule in vector calculus, pretty much, you know, in the world of machine learning, we basically, if without, you know, chain rule um, applied freely at our disposal, pretty much we're like, you know, walking in the ocean of machine learning with some metal shackles, um, pretty much. Um, that's my uh, that's my take. Um, so let's do it. But let's uh, start from the uh, the last layer. All right. So let's start from. So this is uh, this is n l subtract one layer to uh, n l layer. All right. And we want to define we want to define uh, something as uh, uh, as delta. So we want to define a delta i um, then now. It's defined in following way. So we, we have uh, the output of this layer and it goes through a linear transform and uh, it becomes um, this layer right here. Um, so, but at here, so at right here, okay. And let's assume at right here, um, this is our Z of um, N L, okay. So basically this is defined as, and by the way, this is also our, just our uh, output. So the last, the last layer that does not uh, have any um, activation. This is just a defined by. Z i. Okay. And now. Of our last function. So if we look at this definition, we look at this definition, um, its literal meaning is uh, um, it measures It measures how much zi of nl is responsible for the error in the output. And let's see why. Because uh, when we take derivative of this one, let me move this a bit here. Okay. 
and uh, let me move this right here so to see why it's it's simple it's simply we take partial derivative of this and i mean it's literally y hat so it's literally oops and if we take derivative we find this is nothing but uh, so we take derivative with respect to this variable. So we just get uh, um, zi of the n out layer subtract y. As we can see, this is, this is our model's prediction. This is uh, the true value. This is the error, okay? So the delta i, the delta i measures. So for example, the delta i of n out layers just measures the nth layer, like uh, what does nth layer's responsibility in producing this error? For example, if this guy is this guy, then this is just a zero. It means, oh, it's perfect. Um, so right here, we have only one neurons. So we, it's like this is a one by one vector. So this equals one, okay? So now let's uh, move uh, one layer behind. Let's see what happens. We still we apply the same um, like uh, uh, methodology. For example, right here it is uh, we have in this layer, in this layer we have uh, this is n l minus first layer. This is n l layer. The output of this uh, is um, let me use uh, a of n l subtract one. And uh, it equals f of z and l minus one. Okay. And then this vector getting transformed to our final output, which is z of and l is W of NL minus one times this NL minus one layer plus a B, uh, which is a vector, which is a one by one vector. So, uh, but I still use the vector just to be consistent, right? So now if we look at, so now we wanna take a uh, uh, delta um, delta i of uh, an l minus one. So by the way, um, I'm putting this a uh, subscript i here. This means uh, this i stands for, for example, this I stands for the ith component um, in the NL uh, minus one layer. So if we do this, we find, oh, um, by the way, it's still the same. The definition is the same. It's a partial L partial ZI of NL minus one. So basically it says it's the, at this very neuron or say perceptron, the ith component of this guy, what is its responsibility? What is its response to 
our error term. So if we do this, we find uh, we just apply chain rule, nothing fancy. All right. Um, it's basically it's partial L partial. Okay, so now this is the uh, like uh, the meat of uh, today's lecture. So sorry if you get offended if uh, you are you are a vegetarian, but basically this is the essence of today's lecture. That is, uh, we rewrite using chain rule. So let me uh, let me put a vector here. All right. By using this, we can compute this derivative uh, using a recursive way. Now, why I'm saying this? This is uh, the vector, the delta and L vector, okay? So let's look at this. Now let's look at this. And it is, so this guy is right here, which is, uh, whoops, is WNL minus one, the activation function of Z NL minus one plus B of NL minus one, all right? And we can just compute this one by this expression. So what we have here is So what we have here is just, it's just, uh, so we have, this is um, delta of an alpha layer And if we look at this, so we can simply write down the form of the NL minus one layer. So it's W of NL minus one of F of Z NL minus one plus B NL minus one, okay? This term has nothing to do with this. So we're left with this guy. And if we take derivative of this, again, we use chain rule now, again. So, um, so we first, we take derivative of, uh, We first we take derivative of uh, this uh, this a of n l minus one. So this is uh, this is uh, this is a of n l minus one, and this is uh, what uh, we had. Okay, right here. And then we take derivative of f of z and l minus one, partial derivative of uh, z i of n l minus one. And now we're almost there. So now it's uh, delta of n l times this guy. I mean, it's li literally, so we have this guy take derivative of this term. So we'll get this matrix, okay? 
And what we have here is an L minus one, and then we multiply with So we multiply with um, um, we multiply with this f prime of z and l minus one. Okay. So let me put the bracket smaller. So, and this is, uh, um, this is delta I and L minus one. I mean, if now, if we, uh, if we write this in the vectorial form, um, it will be, it will be as follows. It will be an L equals delta So I think somewhere I uh, missed a transpose. It's because, um, yeah, right here. I think it's right here. So some somewhere I missed a transpose. I think some here we should be able to add a transpose here. And this is a uh, um, an L transpose times this matrix, um, then times F um, prime Z of NL minus one, okay? So now in general, we have, uh, uh, we have this formula um, that is, uh, So in general, we have this formula. So in general, in general, we have this formula that is uh, from L minus one, uh, L's layer to, um, I think here is element wise, um, element wise multiplication. So from the elf layer to L plus one layer, what we have is we have delta of L um, is this uh, delta L plus one transpose the weight matrix of L layer and then element wise product with F prime of Z L, okay. And now if we look at L expression this delta's expression. So how do we get this delta? Um, delta's definition, delta's definition is partial L, partial. Um, so Z of uh, L, all right. Now it's kind of straightforward because uh, now if we want to take, uh, so if we want to take partial derivative of the, um, the Lth layer's weight. So for example, it is then we apply chain rule. So chain rule again, it's this guy. Okay. And then partial ZL uh, oh, sorry, I think somewhere, uh, L minus one, okay. 
and then uh, this is uh, partial WL minus one. And the first term becomes delta L. The second term, it's straightforward. It's because um, it's partial. So ZL equals, ZL equals WL minus one activation from L minus one layer plus this B right here, L minus one, okay? And now we take derivative of this matrix of this vector and uh, uh, we'll see that this is delta L times A of L minus one transpose. Okay, so this is, if we take derivative of uh, L minus one layer, um, sweet. And similarly, if we wanna take L minus one bias, we do the same thing. And because um, Z of L has this expression, so this is an identity matrix. And uh, what we have is just this term and which is delta L. So this is, this, um, is the formula of back propagation uh, is to make use of this recursive relation of using the loss function taking derivative with respect to uh, Z, okay? And now let's look at uh, the essence of uh, this back propagation. What we need is, uh... so first of all, if we look at the formula, okay? So if we look at the formula, um, what we need is, what we need is every layers, every layers weight matrix, okay? Every layers weight matrix. And what else we need is uh, every layers, um, this Z, okay? So every layers Z. And then if we look at the expression of this delta, so if we uh, derive the derivative with respect to weight using delta, we'll find we need every layer's activation. So we need these values to evaluate the derivative of the output. Um, so let's copy this. So quantities needed for a back prop. Oh, sorry. So we need these, uh, these like uh, uh, quantities. So the weight matrix, the weight matrix is normally, for example, we, uh, before we, do any, before we do any uh, gradient descent, we can initialize or say, choose an initial value being like a random guess. Okay, so that one, this one is obtained. So is obtained along uh, with training. By training, I just mean gradient descent, which will cover like um, in next lecture, these two. So these two values are actually, if we look uh, in the very first uh, diagram of neural network, 
how to get to this single output is there's an input here, got transformed here, then got transformed here, and then it goes through layer by layer. Finally, we reach the output. This is like the forward direction. And in the chain rule where apply the chain rule. So we start from here and we compute the derivative of the weight associated with last layer. And we, uh, we compute the derivative associated with the previous layers. And uh, it's a backward direction, which is called the back prop. But uh, in order to get the value of these two, okay? So these two are obtained. So obtained through what is called a forward pass. Okay. So what does forward pass? Forward pass is just a, a definition. So for, what does forward pass mean? And we will see this a lot in machine learning literature. I mean, it's nothing but, uh, it's just the evaluation of the function represented by the underlying neural network. So it's a fancy term of um, function evaluation. So basically we're plugging a vector to the neural network, we get an output and uh, we store all the intermediate values. So for example, if this is our output and we have layers of layers of non-linear transformation. So let me use, let me, let me use T uh, to represent each layer. For example, this is an alpha layer. This is an L minus one layer and uh, blah, blah, blah. And we have the second layer, we have the first layer and we have the input. So this is, uh, this is what uh, uh, the forward pass does. Uh, but the key is in during the forward pass. So the forward pass is basically evaluating this Y hat by putting in this vector X, go through layers of layers of non-linear transformation. So non-linear transformation consists of, uh, so basically let me write down this T. So TL is just defined by, so TL of AL is just defined by this. Uh, we just write uh, um, two things in one notation, okay. It's just what happened on the hood from, from alpha layer to, uh, L plus one layer. So, so this is a nonlinear transformation from the L to L plus one layer. Okay. And this is what forward pass does. Forward pass is just we evaluate all these nonlinear transformation. But the key is uh, the key is in order to compute the back prop during the forward pass. Yes, during the forward pass, all intermediate variables are stored. Okay. are stored in the memory. And uh, this, is, this is one of the reason uh, why um, training of a neural network takes so much memory. Uh, for example, um, originally, originally um, when we have only even in the server or say um, some most powerful computer even have only like less than, for example, uh, two gigs of RAM like 20 years ago. But right now um, 
for example, uh, like I um, like this year, Nvidia has a GPU has forty eight gigs of RAM, which can train pretty much uh, billions of parameters of language model. So originally, this is not possible because training takes lots of memory. So the other thing is, which we may not have time to finish, which is a computational complexity, okay? So this is also relate. Uh, this is also related to the homework uh, last question. Um, so first is a big old notation. Okay, so. Uh, and I, I'm sure some of you have already seen this before, this uh, big old notation. Uh, it's basically, it means a, some sort of a, an estimate of uh, how complex of uh, our algorithm is. Uh, so let me uh, give a, um, formal a formal definition, I mean, so formal def. So we say, okay, so formally, I mean, uh, so we say uh, F of N. So by the way, N is just a sum. So N is in the natural number. And we say uh, F of N is big O of GN if the following happens, okay, if there exists a K in R uh, such that uh, K greater than, uh, uh, there exists a K in, uh, in R such that uh, K is greater than zero um, and uh, exist such that there exists a N zero that's in R and and zero, of course, is uh, greater than zero, okay? Um, for any n greater than or equal to um, n zero, uh, f of n less than k times g of n, okay? So, I mean, this is pretty much like uh, like mathematical garbles. So, uh, so like let us translate it to human language. Okay. So what we want to do is Fn is the characterization of how many operations. So normally Fn is um, like uh, the number characterizes the number of operations uh, in an algorithm. All right. So, and roughly the big O notation, seeing, uh, big O notation says, um, so big O notation is, says, so big O notation just describes so big O notation describes basically Fn is proportional is proportional to another function, g of n, all right? So, I mean, even now it's still not so human, okay? So, or we can 
think an example is, for example, n is capital O of three n. All right. So basically what happens is uh, uh, if uh, for a fixed K or say for a fixed K, for a fixed number K, n equals big O of Kn, okay? Or we can write, or we can write Kn equals big O of n. And uh, it basically says this number like grows proportional to this number. So when n is big. So by the way, so re remark is, uh, the remark is big O, because of this, because of this exist, this e such that exist um, and n zero in R plus that this is true. Um, because of that exist, basically it says big O does not care. So does not care when n is small, all right? So when n is small, maybe one algorithm is like a multitude of another algorithm, but uh, when n is big, they scale roughly the same. Okay, so for example, um, this one is called linear complexity and, uh, um, and big O n log n by log, we mean natural log. This one is almost linear. So these two are very good complexity. It means our algorithm runs proportional to the number of operations. Okay, so almost linear. This one is not so good. It means, um, so for example, this is quadratic complexity. So keep in mind, uh, f of n describes the number of uh, operations in an algorithm. And this n is normally our degrees of freedom in like our model. So if we enlarge our n by a time of two for quadratic complexity algorithm, our number of operations quadrupled. So this is not uh, favorable, but sometimes we have to deal with this. So in next lecture, so first we'll, um, we'll see uh, what computational complexity of uh, back propagation is. And next, uh, if we have time, we'll talk about gradient descent. So that's it for today. If you have some short question, you're welcome to just uh, stay here and ask me. Okay. So I'll stop recording here.